iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. So thank you all for joining me today to talk about Together Apart. I'm very excited to hear how this project came to be. It's going to be streaming on Broadway On Demand on August 6th as a benefit for the Actors Fund. So Lisa, I'm gonna start with you. How did Together Apart come to be? Well, it started when we had a, a Zoom reunion. Surprise, surprise. It was it was 2020, and we it was the year, I think it was the year that some of us were supposed to be having our college reunion at Brown University, and of course, we couldn't do it in person. So a friend of ours, Brian Herrera, along with another friend, Carl Belfati, started doing these loosely gathered um, reunions. I think it started with an LGBTQ reunion that led to a theater reunion, and then the musical theater reunion. And um, Brian, our friend, tried to, there were so many people in this meeting, pages and pages of Zoom friends, that Brian did a smart thing and said everyone needs to go around and say their name and when they graduated and what they're doing now, I think was, you know, what are you doing during COVID and, and what is your favorite musical theater memory from Brown? And there was so many people there. And as they went around, it seemed like we, had, we all had such amazing memories of college, and, and there was a lot of personality there, as there often is with musical theater people. Um, and also, there were a number of professors and teachers um, who were a little bit concerned with, what are we going to do? How can we do theater? How, are we, how, how is this working? How is this going to work for us? So I think two light bulbs went off in my brain. One was, instead of talking about musical theater, let's put on a show, let's write a show. Because I also think it's really hilarious when people are talking about, you know, mundane things or exciting things and they break into song. Like, just like the first song in our show is, how can I connect? I felt like we were performing our first song during that Zoom reunion. So I, I thought it would be really cool to do that. And also I thought if we did it specifically for Zoom, then that would be a, a proper medium. We wouldn't be doing sort of a, um, Sorry, I've got a phone ringing in the background because I'm at my parents' house in Dallas. Um, but anyway, it, it wouldn't be trying to capture theater on Zoom. It would be properly performed and created for this medium of Zoom where we were all living. And everybody was excited about the idea because this was our friends from college. And uh, everybody was really eager to join and write a show. Do you all have anything to add? Well, I was going to ask Beth, you know, as the producer for this, what were the challenges to make this happen? Because it is a very complex online musical. I mean, there's so much editing, there are so many people involved and it's very seamless in how the final product came together. So as the producer, what were those challenges for you all? Well, it is kind of you to say it's seamless. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was uh, a lot of help from a lot of people. Basically, you know, Lisa at the Zoom said, hey, this is really cool. Who wants to write a musical? And so a lot of people said yes. And I think the biggest challenge for us was the fact that none of us were in the same place. There was LA, there was New York, there was every place in the middle of the country and, and South and Europe. And it was just trying to figure out when we could come together and how we would come together at a time when people could be creative. So it was meeting at 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. And that was, that was the first challenge. And then realizing that doing a musical on Zoom doesn't really mean do a musical on Zoom, as I'm sure you have experienced. If we tried to sing Happy Birthday together, we would not be in sync. So we had to figure out how to make it look like Zoom, but have everybody record on their own and then find an amazing editor who we did, this man, Kevin Serace, who's also a theater producer who has luckily been figuring out this platform for a little longer than we knew about. Um, and we partnered with the 24-hour plays who had earlier in the year figured out how to take their plays and make them into viral monologues and do them making it look like Zoom. So we were very, very lucky to have these amazing technical geniuses work with us. And then it was just logistics. And like Lisa said, it was a bunch of people who wanted to do something. So everybody was incredibly generous with their time and their creative skills. And we, um, Matt might speak more to this in a minute, but we based this on something we did in, in college that was um, called the, what was it called, Matt? The- Once Upon a, once upon a Weekend. Once Upon a Weekend. So our goal was to do this quickly, is to, you know, the way Paula Vogel had done it, she was a professor at school mm -hmm. and she, she posted a theme on the door of her office and then 
that theme would be something people would go write plays about and that I'm probably butchering this and you'll speak better to this or do you want to jump in for a second then I'll continue. Sure. You know, part, <laughs> early on we so we had this um you know Lisa is such a visionary and she was she saw this as a possibility. She saw how we were all connecting on that call and she said let's turn this into a musical. And then Beth Wishney has always had magic about her. She's just always been able to you know, she's like, oh, I got somebody who'll edit the entire thing for free. She has this like magic about her assembling people in this amazing way. And then I, I um, and, and there's a lot of different people with a lot of different skills. I'm a writer. I write for TV. And I was like, oh, we'll turn this into a writer's room and we'll collect all these people and we'll all write one story together. And, but I had forgotten that these were a, a group of people from Brown University who all have very strong ideas. And it became clear quickly that it was not going to be one story <laughs> all together. And so we came up, we, we went back to this thing that Paula Vogel used to do. And what that was, was uh, she was she was the head of the graduate playwriting program and she would post a theme on her door for the week on a Monday. And you had to write a 10 minute play by Thursday, submit it, and then they would choose one of those, they would choose like 10 of those plays. You would get one day to cast, one hour of rehearsal in the space and you would perform them on Saturday night. And so we thought we'll do something fun and easy like that. And then as, as Beth was saying, <laughs> of course there is no fun and easy and quick on Zoom. Um, but what it allowed us to do is we had like 10 groups, 10 creative teams of writers and musical theater composers. And, uh, and each of them wrote their own piece and we decided on a time limit for each. And we also decided on sort of general areas that people would cover. and. As the show developed, we came up with sort of overall themes and how this group songs would come together and bring these disparate pieces into one piece. And before we talk about the themes and the, yeah. the various musicals that are part of this, Rhonda, when you got brought on, I, I guess my first question is a musical about COVID. Were you like, yes, I'm on board. Let's do this right <laughs> now. Or were you like, how is this going to work? Like, what was that process for you as a performer? Uh, th thank you. Well, uh, Lisa reached out to me um, and like most of us during those first few months, I'm not sure exactly what month it was she reached out to me, but we were all, you know, figuring out our lives and we were all so busy. And so I, I loved the idea. At that point, it was still the idea of let's make a musical. Um, so it was just in that very kind of open space and I loved it, but I wasn't able to commit. And and I was so thankful, I'm, I'm forever thankful to her that she continued to sort of hound me for the next few months. And um, and then finally, when I got on, on a Zoom with her and Beth and, and, and they really explained what it was at that point, I said, oh my God, yes, I don't have, I have zero time, but who cares? I, <laughs> I want in, I want in, I want in. And so, yeah, once once they once they could explain it and once it started to take form it was absolutely a no-brainer and i'm so thankful that that they kept on me so i could i could be part of this and can i and also I, mention yeah let me mention quickly actually Rhonda, we saw each other right before lockdown in, in february Dallas, of in march in February, March? we I, I came to visit. February. It was February. You're right because it was one of my best friends who I've known since I was born. Yeah. For her birthday, she took me to go see Oprah at uh, this big arena in Dallas. Yeah, and yeah. Rhonda's sister was on stage with Oprah, and we saw each other. I was like, Rhonda must be here, and so I saw her Rhonda backstage, and I said, We have to see each other, connect. And then here it was in this very unusual situation a couple months mm -hmm. later. But and Rhonda, frankly, had we not connected then, I don't even know that we had each other's cells or all of that. I stuff. know we like ha we took our we were like let's take a selfie. We have to do something, yeah. and um, and also we we had a number of pieces at this point that we wanted Rhonda to take a look at because Rhonda's an amazing singer, actress, producer. You know she does it all, and we wanted her to choose what she wanted to do. So she chose to be the teacher in um in the piece that I was working on about an elementary school classroom but then she came to one of our readings we did a reading of all the pieces to see where we were because one of the great things about the team too was we challenged each other we supported each other but we challenged each other and there was dramaturgs and people would look at each other's pieces and you know which is what we like to do in college but so Rhonda came to see the reading and and you saw our piece, but then what happened, Rhonda? <laughs> yes, I loved the piece that I had originally chosen. Um, and then I, I continued to watch all the other ones. And one came up at the end that I thought, oh, gosh, that is speaking to my heart. And um, and and so I jumped on that one. That's the one I ended up being in. I jumped on that one. And that team 
was just all the teams were spectacular but that team we just worked so well together um i was very very sad when when it was over it was a wonderful experience why was it that musical that kind of touched you in a different way than the the one with the teachers is is absolutely hysterical in so many ways but this one is very special it's very special um you know i just think it was it was the connection between the two characters um it was unexpected it was uh nuanced it was uh deep and uh and very human and very much what i feel we all were dealing with during this time this feeling of wanting to be and in some ways being able to be connected on a deeper level uh because we were physically apart um and uh also also the concept of of connecting with someone that you haven't seen in a long time that you have a deep um a, a a deep relationship with even though it's been many years since you've seen them that happened for me many times uh during this pandemic over zoom people you know you have this desire to connect you know well and so, i think uh, that... i was so excited because she was singing in the original piece she chose right. um, she wasn't singing which is fine because she's also a great actress but i was so happy that she got to actually sing in her piece and i love i fell in love with that song I fell in uh, love with that song and just for I... some context for people watching it that the scene that she was in is a play about two people who had who sort of almost uh, fell in love in college and they're now reconnecting later in life uh, with with very different lives than they did in college. Right. And as we say in the lyrics, they are happy-ish. 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 And I think with the themes of each of the, the mini musicals, I think that what's amazing to me about watching this is it could have been a musical about dealing with death and loss and how COVID has really affected us with how many people we have lost around the world. But you delved into relationships and what we're dealing with as parents and what we're dealing with as uh, friends. And I had a game night every Saturday with my friends. And when that story came along, I was like, I know this, like this has been me every Saturday for 52 weeks. So I completely understand. So within the writing process and this collective that you all made, how difficult was it to pare down the stories to only 10 and to keep some of them very lighthearted, like the the dating stories, the online dating stories, to keep kind of a, a level of lightness in certain ways to together apart. And Matt, I'll throw that question to you. Yeah, I think that, I mean, part of it was honestly just the natural, people were pitching ideas and and there was a, there was a design, there was sort of a story team, um, and that was Maria Sigenthaler and Carl Belfati and Beth and, and Lisa and I and um, and Leslie Buxbaum. And we were sort of helping look at all that, you know, people were, everyone was pitching ideas and we were like, well, we this, this idea feels the strongest for us and this is great, but we have one that's kind of like this, you know, like, um, you know, we had a lot of like in, the, in one of the ones I wrote that with Joe Beth Williams and Josh Hamilton, like that, I was originally pitching that as a mom and, and kid story, but they're like, we have a lot of moms, like what if you did it with a single dad, you know? So that we, we had those kind of suggestions. And then I think people just gravitated towards different tones and you know, and there were some people who were like, I really wanna talk about some of the pain of this experience. And other people were like, I wanna talk about the ridiculousness of trying to, you know, connect with friends or family over Zoom. And, and I also think not only dealing with the issues of COVID, but bringing in Black Lives Matter and the murder of George Floyd and making it about the full 18 months and not just about the loss was super important to this piece as well. Yeah, I think that was something that was important to all of us. We felt like um, it, it was, these were topics that were important to the group and important to humans. And, and it was irresponsible if we didn't spend a good amount of time really focusing on it. Um, it's something that's on all of our minds and, um, and, and the writers, you know, Derek Livingston, who specifically wrote uh, the piece called Breathe with Maria Sigenthaler, um, we, we wanted to be able to hit those marks and hit those points and, and give people a time to reflect and experience, even though it's very hard, you know. And I think and it's important. I think you touched on something really important was 
it is a musical, you know, and I remember after 9-11, people were, a lot of people were trying to make art about 9-11. And though I lived in New York at that time, and it was, I, I really didn't want to watch a piece about 9-11, you know, because I had been through it. And I felt like, and we talked a lot about that, how we didn't want this to re-traumatize people, but to give people hope and to be like, that they're, that they're connecting through this piece and actually feeling uplifted through this piece and looking for, and, 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 and the gift of this piece and us all connecting was, oh, well, well, being on Zoom allowed us to connect and the quarantine allowed us to connect in ways that we never would have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. And that became the central theme of the whole piece was all these people making connections that they wouldn't have made if it hadn't been for the quarantine. And Beth, as the producer, one of the producers, to have this be streamed on the Actors Fund to raise money back in May, and then to have Broadway On Demand come back and say, we want to stream this again, again, be a benefit for the Actors Fund. What does that mean to you as a producer who watched this piece come to life over the course of so many months? It's amazingly gratifying, I think, for everybody involved. We're so proud of it. And I feel like we wanted to do some good in a time when everything felt awful and to give back to the community that we're all part of, our colleagues, our friends who really struggled. And we were so proud to raise over $30,000 the first time around, but being given another opportunity to let a broader audience see it and also see the work everybody put in, but to be able to give more to this community that still has not been able to thrive. As you said, before we jumped on, Broadway may be pushed. We don't know when people will be able to come back into their lives. So to be able to keep doing some good is it's just an amazing feeling to know that we can still contribute even from this far away and with a piece that mattered so much to us. Um, yeah, I mean, and to go back to something Matt was saying, I think when we all worked on this piece, we all wanted to share our true experience about COVID, about what it was like from March 13th to November 2nd. And right now, it's sort of a historical piece in some ways. That was a period of time, but it's still what we're living. So as you said, you had game night every Saturday to be able to have more people look at it and say, oh, that means something to me. That touches me in a way that reminds me that I lived through it. That reminds me there's still some positivity. That is exciting that we have this other chance to share it with people. And there's also a bigger story to this too, is our industry shut down, our whole entire inter entertainment industry shut down for 18 plus months. So Rhonda, as a, as a performer, as a producer, as a director, to be able to perform again, whether it was Zoom or at home by yourself with the recorder, um, what does that mean to you as a performer? Oh, it was everything. Like I, I, I mean, I think I can speak for, for, you know, all the performers that, like you said, have been out of work for all this time to have not just the, the physical um, something to to do, to memorize, to to engage with, but but, you know, the mental just like getting up and making art, you know, again, um, so many of us get stuck in, you know, do I have a job? Do I have a gig? But we can make art at any time and i think you know really lisa as as a as a as a leader in this to to go to that reunion and then say we can make art out of this you know like i i think that was really important i'll, I'll speak for myself it was really important for my mental health if nothing else it was really important to have a project that i was uh making and felt good about and was thinking about and was building and was building in conjunction and in collaboration with other artists was so great. And I just wanna say one thing you said, even if I was on my camera by myself, the truth is I was physically by myself, but you know, all of our rehearsals and everything were very collaborative and very uh, like, you know, right here on, on Zoom, the, all the rehearsals. So I felt very connected. I did not feel at all by myself. Um, very, very connected during, during those weeks of working. It was, it was spectacular, it was spectacular. And Lisa, with the topic of COVID and the last 18 months, some people may say it's too soon to make art out of what we've gone through. So how do you respond to people who may say, it, now's not the time? Um, I, th I think it is the time. I think um, we can't help but make art. That's what we do. You know, that's how we process life. That's how we reflect on our daily life. That's how we connect with others. That's how we connect with ourselves. Um, and again, with, with the leadership of, of some people who are more experienced writers like Matt, who's on the call here, 
it, it's really about people's stories and COVID happens to be part of that story. Um, it's, it's about things not going the way you expected them to and yet finding um, connection through the small things in your own lives, through relationships with other people, as an audience being able to watch these pieces and see yourself in them makes you feel alive and human. So I think, you know, there's, there's, I think the people who would say it's too soon to make something about COVID, they need to go to their, to it, you know, get their Crayola crayon and their markers and get a piece of paper and just see what they can come up with because there's always something to make. It, it just, I think that's part of being human, especially for a lot of us. Absolutely. And I, I, and I think that the people who watch it, what we hear is they, it makes them feel connected. It really, they watch it and it makes them feel less alone and feel connected really, you know, heart to heart with other people. Um, you know, we, we weren't sure when we were doing this, would this just be something that was fun for us? Cause we were all alumni, you know, but people want, that's not been the peop experience of people watching it. They, it doesn't, you don't have to have been part of Brown to care about it or to, to respond to it or to fall in love with the characters. Well and as someone that just watched it for the first time, you identify with every single part of this musical because we've all gone through it collectively for the last 18 months. So it's not like, oh, this one doesn't ap apply to me. This, mu this mini musical applies to me. So it's the whole story applies to everyone, which I, th I think is the, the, the greater common ground as well for people who are about to watch this. I think we were really lucky also to have such amazing people that we happen to know through, from college because people have very high standards for themselves. Again, there was a lot of talk about the our philosophy of what what is this piece supposed to be. It's not just the funny things like when you get frozen on Zoom or um, when somebody walks by the background who's not supposed to be there. It's it's actually the stories. It's the stories. It's all about the stories. And we were lucky to have, again, like people like Matt, Leslie, other people on our team who are more experienced um, writers, and, and Beth, who's a producer who works with a lot of Broadway musical, to continue to say it, it's got to be about the story. And, I, and that's what I think people really connect with. And I think something that really helped with that, too, was, yes, it was a bunch of people who do this, like Rhonda and Lisa and, and me and, and Beth. But it was also our friends from college, like one of the, the dating thing uh, that uh, on Zoom, which I wrote with my friend Jules. Jules and I wrote a musical together in college. He's now a cancer doctor, you know, but it's like 30 years later, we wrote another musical, you know, and it was, it was super fun. And, and, and I think that brought a sense of humanity and, and, and relatability to the whole project. Well, and I think so, that's what I, I think that's what I was trying to say earlier is to break up the seriousness with some of the absurdity that we've all gone through over the last, you know, 18 plus months, I think was key because it, you can get so caught up in the stories of death and loss and grief. And you have to remember that there have been moments where we have laughed over the last 18 months, which I think is super important. We've laughed and we've connected and we've um, um, been able to walk each other through things. Uh, all, all of that has happened also, it, right, right in line with all of the uh, frustration and the pain and the fear, right in line with that has been the other side. Yeah. Absolutely. And I wanna mention before I let you go, it's going to be streamed on Broadway On Demand uh, starting August 6th, this Friday uh, to benefit the Actors Fund. Please go to Broadway On Demand to find out more information. You can find out on iHeartRadioBroadway.com as well. But Lisa, Rhonda, Beth, and Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm, again, congratulations on Together Apart. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best for nothing.